So how do we how do we hard transition to what's going on in Texas? <laughs> but I swear, are you you don't want to talk about the the fact that the rebel is going to be allowed at the debate tomorrow? Oh, well, we can talk about that if you want to. Sure. We have no, I just, we like, have no ordered plans, so we I can, just, uh... no. But I just like feel like that's like the big like news for y'all as far as like the stuff that the stuff that's going on with the election that and and throwing tiny rocks. Yeah, it's so predictable in a way. Like the funny thing is, uh, Vienno and I have talked about it on a podcast episode that is yet to be released uh, mm. prior prior to this decision, and the thing is. It, Last time was a different story. We could talk about that in a sec in a second. But this time, what was weird was you can tell, like we could even tell on the show, reading what the new rules were for the debate, that they were specifically put in place to specifically target Rebel News. <laughs> like you could just tell it. So for those who don't know, the uh, Elections Commission, which I believe was appointed mostly by the liberals i think how that, that yeah it's, it's the national debate commission which was set up for the last election and continues and folks will remember that our friend craig kielberger was one of the original appointments on that commission so oh. very high <laughs> levels of qualifications uh to be a liberal uh, but yes basically a, an independent board was set up because of uh complaints and concerns about the 2015 election to the... have our debates be impartial and for those who didn't get that reference, the Kielbergers are the, the we charity thing for anyone who knows about the we charity scandal. But we're not going to get into that. But yeah, but yeah. No, we definitely don't have time. Watch <laughs> the White Savior. Listen to the White yes. Saviors podcast if you're interested for Candleland. Uh, yes, I've heard or good don't. things about that. But well, I mean, yeah, it's fuck so Canada good. Land, but I've heard good things about that podcast. Uh, I will never forgive Canada Land for both Justin Ling and uh, Jenna Gerson. Gerson? Oh yeah, me too. That's um, but they fixed that. They now hired the person we all wanted, and the back bench is fucking fabulous. And Fatima, uh, Syed is like one of the best journalists, like young journalists in Canada. And so she has her own show now with like a very diverse set of political commentators. It's great. Yeah, no, but Justin Ling also hates Canada Land now. Like, like that backfired on them. He they like had a fight. It's I don't know what happened. Maybe the chat knows. Uh, but basically, like, he no longer is, I, it had something to do with cool, cool Mules, I think, um, which was their podcast about Vice, uh, and trafficking drugs, because Justin still works at Vice, but anyways, all that to say, mistakes were corrected. Yeah, my final is, point on, on this whole thing is Justin Ling wrote an article recently, basically calling the conservative platform socialist, so. Oh, I know. He's so ridiculous. I hate, I hate him. He's so annoying. He literally, like, I can't believe he was the leftist voice on that show. I, like, I know. screamed at, I hate watch that show. Dan said he's a freelancer, right? Uh, where was I, though, with the, the Rebel thing? So, so I don't I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what the specific ruling was, but it was it was something like a media organization cannot uh send reporters to the debate if they have a like civil liberties arm of their organization that particularly targets strangers okay which is exactly okay. almost like word for word what the uh fight the fines initiative is uh by rebel news <laughs> okay now i don't think they're actually protecting people's civil li civil liberties but they are, that's how they frame it, and they're particularly targeting people they don't know who get to go in and, like, try to fight their fines for not wanting to wear a mask in a Target or whatever. Not that we have Targets anymore, but you know what I mean. And so, <laughs> so that's... All right, Target Canada. I'm not going to lie. I miss Target. I loved it. I got so much cheap shit when they went out of business. Rest in peace, Target Canada. I miss you. Malda. It smelled so bad though. Like it, it did smell funny. I don't know what it was. But like it yeah, was there was a weird Zeller smell. smell. When it didn't... Do you not understand? That no, wasn't it was, it was the that Starbucks. Was it was the Starbucks coffee like mingling with plastic, like the plastic toad aisle, no. and yeah. it, it just it created a funky smell. Like every target. That is not yeah, true. It was, it was horrific. Zares has Starbucks in it. It was old Zeller's smell. No, it see, was no, Zeller's. Zeller's it smelled like that. The smells I could tolerate Zellers. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I hard agree with Vienna on this one. Either way. So. <laughs> I don't I don't know if it was a specific, like if it was just the one target in town that was like that. But I remember like not being able, like feeling like I couldn't like breathe properly. I was in um, both Kitchener and Cambridge when Target was around, and both Kitchener and Cambridge's targets had that smell. So it was a universal smell. It was a universal stench. I don't any other Canadians in the chat, can you vouch for us? Did Target have a smell? Yay or nay? I think it was a <laughs> Zeller smell that carried over to the targets. That's my theory, and I'm Zellers gonna stick with it. Had a wonderful scent. <laughs> What did Zeller smell like? Like that cafe, the the like Zeller's cafe that had no name to it. Yeah, that's what Zeller's. I miss Zeller's. I honestly, I miss neither. <laughs> no dog in this fight. I did appreciate when Target went under. I got some cheap coats. I remember that. Uh, exactly. Nam. Nam said, I worked for Sears Canada until the bitter end, and our stores looked like shite, but did not smell like it. Meanwhile, Byway smelled like an old person's mothballed home. I never shopped at Target. <laughs> Two cars said, my best seller's memory was going to the video game section. Okay. And Solid United Progressive point. never went to Target either. So we have, we have no, no Target people in the chat today. <laughs> and did guys, we're, we're getting to the heart of the true Canadian culture war here. <laughs> Targets in Australia <laughs> only smell like great savings on quality products. So I feel like we get our top tier Australian content on the show. Uh, <laughs> so where was? And so yes, the election law was specifically targeted towards Rebel News, and you could tell. And I knew because of that, it wasn't going to succeed. I don't think I said that on the, the podcast that we recorded. I just, I had an inkling they were going to fight it and clearly win. Because it looks like the, the government has it out for, and, and the fact that, like, I sympathize with one thing, which is, like, I don't like the idea of the government coming up with, like, here is what our certified government designation of what a, a journalist is, right? That worries me a little bit because they're going to exclude people who I would consider to be journalists, right? That are doing legit work, especially on indigenous issues and shit like that, right? So I, I fully, no, I get it, you know? So if-, if Are you uh, Jesse Brown now, Jody? Because that's yeah. literally Jesse's argument about government regulation of media. Uh, no, I mean, I disagree with Jesse when You're it comes to the bail. Not so far apart. Yeah. I disagree with him when it comes to the bailout stuff. I'm probably way more in favor of the bailout. I, I think the bailout could be done differently, but like I don't have an in principle objection towards it, which I know he does. Uh, yeah. But on this front, I mean, the only time I remember him bringing, I stopped listening to them a while ago, so I don't know how much he's talked about in the last year or so. But I remember there was one time when he had a journalist on who was being sued, I think, by the government for there was an indigenous uh, protest. I want to say it was in Newfoundland. I can't remember where they like entered a like oil rig site or something like this. Mm -hmm. And the journalist went in with the activists, N not the journalist didn't do anything while they were like in there, but they went with the activists to like report on it and reported it very deferentially to the indigenous activists. And that was like Jesse's like reaction to it was kind of like, well, how can you say you're a reporter if you're like hyping up the activists or like whatever? And like my argument there is just like, no, he's a fucking reporter. Like, of course, reporters are going to be biased. I don't believe in some sort of like magical, completely object objective, free from any like constraints journalism, you know? So on that regard, yeah. I, I disagree with him as well, but. But whether I think the like any government can craft like the perfect like to a T legislation to go like here is a government certified journalist, I just I, I don't know that that's possible. So if that means we have to suffer, uh, here's this is the one part I don't get, and maybe I have to look into it more. Is like I wonder if there is some sort of process of like a, a limit because I imagine like you can't just have everyone. Ask questions at these debates. You know what I mean? 
Because it's like you could have a million journalists that want to, and then you don't just have enough time of the day or room in the auditorium to answer these fucking ask or answer these questions, right? So I wonder if there's like some sort of sorting mechanism you can have. I don't know how the last election rebel fucking like jumped the queue. They were like the first to ask a question at like almost every time. And uh, yeah. So anyways, they're going to be able to ask their questions and let them, they're going to walk up. They're going to say something stupid. You're going to get the candidates go, I'm not going to answer your question. And then that's what we're going to get. Cool. Yeah. Cool. You did it. <laughs> and so beyond that, I don't really care. I almost feel like this time around, it was worse that the government did what they did because this gives rebel again, because last election, the one thing that pissed me off the most was because because they tried to exclude Rebel last time, mm -hmm. they fought it. They uh, they allowed Ezra to write an op-ed in the Globe and Mail, arguing about how they're being censored, gave them more publicity. It was just fucking... It was stupid. And then this time they did it again, and now what do we get again? We get a glowing, na like basically glowing National Post article about how the government's trying to like silence spe like the speech of these people. It, like and for yeah. what? So they could ask their stupid questions, which the candidates are going to refuse to answer. <laughs> Anyways, th th those are my thoughts. I don't know if you have thoughts on it, but I no. It, to be honest, I don't really. Um, apart from like I, I will be listening to um, whatever Candleland says tomorrow. Um, uh, tomorrow's their Thursday show where they like discuss how the media is handling things. Um. And I'm curious to hear kind of that take, but I think you're right that um, it doesn't really matter. Um, and in some ways, like, as you pointed out, as soon as the liberals try and make specific rules, like, like they never, like, it's not like they have, I guess, like, more broadly, what I would say is that the media in this country does not know how to deal right now like like i think the media generally We're fascists like, at all no not at all bit, like, fascists are everywhere like but it's not even just that like like the way they're reporting the news and hanging on to this white male idea of job objectivity still even after the last year of just like like we know that the ndp only gets fair coverage during the rip period because they have to because it's the law right like there's just like so many things that are not in the interest of us in our communities because of how commercialized um, and how much money is involved um, that apart from like individual reporters that I enjoy following um, and then like various podcasts, um, I just don't see how the media like the way it is right now, the, the legacy media is going to exist in 20 years like as soon as the boomers die out um which is terrible of me to say uh like the the change as far as like people because people want to pay for news and they want good news um but they're not getting it from folks who are just like repeating justin trudeau's talking lines over and over and over again um and it's like they don't understand how to critique those things well like there's no understanding of context or the system because they all it's been gutted so much there's so few reporters there's so few local reporters that people aren't experts on anything in particular and so we get this dribble yeah i'm i struggle because like i i, I refuse to give any money to any of our like mainstream sources like global mail national post any of that because of their op-eds and all that i mean even their yeah. actual reporting can suck sometimes but every once in a while they hit on, hit on something interesting and it's frustrating as hell when, like, I, I can't have access to it. It's behind a fucking paywall. Meanwhile, like, uh, not not to make this whole, like, well, I pay taxes thing. But, like, we are trying to help them as a country subsidize their work. The least they could do is make some of this available to us. Uh, it's, it's Well, and that's it's, uh, what's frustrating about that subsidy, right? Like, I think that that's the issue um, is that it is money with no strings attached um to corporations like it, it's not being given to individual journalists to keep journalist jobs it's being given to rogers bell like these big families the irving family like all of these people don't need it in order to 
keep their profits in a way that is actually like wrong and misleading. And that's why I stipulated too that like in principle I'm okay with the bailout uh, or whatever or, or some sort of subsidization of the media. Uh, but how uh, the government is doing it is uh, not how I would do it if I were king of Canada. <laughs> Uh, well, we know that's a title that everyone wants. Well, uh, uh, the chat we, right now uh, is joking. This podcast is nothing yeah, but you... monarchy. No, the, this the chat... podcast is nothing but a monarchy. <laughs> the chat right now is talking about Queen Dadula. Do you know Queen Dadula? Oh, no. I'm so glad that you've avoided this part of the internet right now. There's this woman. She's a QAnon supporter. Her, her name is oh, yeah, no, my... Queen Ramona Dadula. I don't Dadula. have time for that shit. And she believes she's the official queen of Canada. And uh, I did see yeah. this, but yeah, I follow enough extremists that y'all don't know that like, <laughs> like I follow the people who are feeding that shit. Um, so yeah, I I don't have time for for other bullshit, which is a good transition. Here we go. <laughs> but here you just, go. Just I, right... I gave you one on a platter. Here is your transition. We will. We will transition. I actually, I, I have a way to transition it anyways as well. So. Don't worry, but I wanted to touch on one thing before we moved on, which is you mentioned the old boomers who consume like the media and stuff like this. And uh, speaking of old boomers, I had a friggin' interaction with Andrew Coyne today <laughs> on Twitter. Which... Why did you do that to yourself? I didn't think he was going to retweet me. <laughs> but uh, he wrote some stupid... Speaking of like our, our uh, national media being really stupid and like loving fascism for some reason andrew coin uh wrote this article and i'll explain andrew coin in a second for those who don't know it says my latest on the rise of the people's party yes it's terrible that so many people support them but they do which means it's wrong to have excluded them from the debates so the people's party because they don't have any uh, seats and it doesn't look likely that, that they'll get seats and the polling was low earlier on they were excluded from uh, being able to have their leader at the debates, Maxime Bernier, who I've yelled at before. Uh, so my response to Andrew Coyne was to say, uh, centrism and the cult of debate. <laughs> it's just, that was my tweet. And then he responded, also known as democracy. <laughs> And then I said, democracy and debate are not synonymous, you dingus. <laughs> and that was that was our exchange. He, and then did you get blocked? No, he, he didn't block me. But, you know. Wow. Kudos. I was expecting a block when I called him a dingus, but I, I did not yeah. get blocked. Uh, one of, that white male privilege working there for you there, Joe. One of our followers wrote an awesome like uh, response to it, though. So they, they had, like, you know, this dictionary definition democracy thing? And then it goes, noun, a system of government characterized primarily by every citizen's duty to debate in the affirmative that Andrew Coyne is a dingus. <laughs> Andrew Coyne said something stupid again? Let's get ready to practice some democracy. <laughs> uh, we also, to be clear to him, Canada doesn't have a democracy because First Ask the Post is not democratic and like was deliberately designed that way by Sir John A. Macdonald and the quote-unquote fathers. Like, let's all problematize that patriarchal language, too, of confederation. Yeah. So, like, not only are you super wrong, Andrew Quinn, but you're, like, extra wrong. This is not a democracy. If it was, I would be able to vote NDP, and then there would be a certain percentage of the people proportional representation, and we need that. Like, last time I checked, 2015 was supposed to be the last election under First Past the Post. I think the funny thing there, too, is I think he actually is a supporter of uh, proportional representation. I read that on his Wikipedia earlier today when I also found out that he uh, is a huge supporter of the War on Terror. So that's fun. Uh... <laughs> who, who was it? Yeah, no, that's true. For those who don't know, Andrew Coyne, he sits on a... We have our CBC, which is our na national broadcaster. And they have a show called The National, which is like the like 10 o'clock at night news channel with all the... It's like Rachel Maddow, but for Canadians, I guess. <laughs> I uh, and on that, they have uh, a panel discussion at the end of each show of The National called At Issue, which they've had for decades. And Andrew Coyne has been on that for years, for years. 
But I also want to say debate is not how you you fix things like the PPC. The, P, the people who vote PPC or are active in anti-mask and anti-vaccine shit is because they're emotionally compelled to do it. And they didn't rationalize themselves into that belief system. So it's not like you're going to go and go, here's my sheet. Here's my facts point by point why you're wrong. And then they're just going to go, whoa, I didn't think about that. And then just stop uh, throwing rocks at Trudeau, you know? So <laughs> that's not how it works. And you're not going to debate your way out of this. You you get yourself out of this by socially isolating them and not giving them space to talk and say shit and appealing to other people's emotions, right? So what you do is you tell them to fuck off. This is what you, this is what you do. It's true. Or support your local anti-fascist. <laughs> Why not? Yes. and uh, Be your local anti-fascist. Be, yeah, be your local anti-fascist. That's very proactive, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my rebels. Hello, my rebels. I'm a good boy. I'm a weirdo.